Time now for your forecast first. WRBL News 3 First Alert Weather. Oh, beautiful sunset right now for our Morgan and Morgan camera. Across the river we go with clear skies. And tonight, not frigid. What's going on with this first alert forecast? We're going to talk about it coming up. But temperatures out there are the story. Even at this hour, we still have upper 60s. We even have a few temperatures close to the 70 mark this afternoon in Barber County. Now, the big story, you're going to see me highlight this. It's going to be a high pressure block. What does that mean to us? Well, it means that winter weather will be held off for a while. You're going to see what it's going to do towards the Midwest coming up. You're watching WRBL News 3 on your side. All right, thank you so much, Bob. Straight ahead and what prosecutors describe as a scheme to steal millions of dollars from Muskogee County, the mastermind behind it all is believed to plead guilty tomorrow. Next, updates emerge in the 2006 murder of an Auburn University graduate student when the suspect is expected to appear in court nearly two decades later. Plus, Columbus police team up with Georgia State Patrol on a crackdown that has had more than 500 cases in crime over the span of just three days. The results of that joint effort this hour as News 3's Evening Edition starts right now. On your side, this is News 3 Evening Edition. Well, good evening to you, and we thank you for trusting News 3 Evening Edition. I'm Blake Eason, and tonight for Teresa Whitaker and Phil Scoggins. Leading us off tonight, we began with breaking news right now out of Columbus. Sergeant Everard with Columbus Police confirms one person was shot in the 4400 block of Rosemont Drive. One black male was shot. The status of his injuries are unknown at this time. Now, no identity has been confirmed by police. The scene has been cornered off, and individuals are asked to avoid the area as this is an active investigation. We're working to learn more, and once we do, of course, we'll update you right here on air and online at WRBL.com. The Muskogee County Sheriff's Office is cracking down on gang activity through their law enforcement operation, Operation Zero Tolerance. Our News 3's Zachary Gray joins us now with more on how the Sheriff's Office is working to put identified gang members behind bars. Zachary? Blake, the Muskogee County Sheriff's Office Drug, Gang and Fugitive Task Force is teaming up with local and federal partners to seek and arrest gang members with active felony warrants. The operation is working to up the visibility of law enforcement, especially in areas with high levels of gang activity. Here's the breakdown from this weekend. Investigators cleared five felony arrest warrants and three misdemeanor warrants. A total of six people were arrested. Five of those were identified gang members. Investigators seized three firearms, two of which were stolen. They also seized 146 grams of marijuana, 14 grams of cocaine, 35 ecstasy pills, and over $2,000 cash. The following people were arrested during this operation. 34-year-old Davion Alexander, who is now pending extradition from the Russell County Jail, 31-year-old Anthony Penn, 18-year-old Jaikevius Giles, 27-year-old Rufus Alston, 35-year-old Christopher Harper, and not pictured 34-year-old Yulian Smith. The Muskogee County Sheriff's Office says they also want to encourage the public to continue utilizing their tip line, as many of the arrests they've made in the new year are a direct result of those tips. Blake, right back to you. All right, our thanks to Sacra for that incredibly detailed report. For Sheriff Countryman's full statement and the list of those charges of those arrested this weekend, you'll find that information on our website. That's WRBL.com. Also happening in Muskogee County, the Columbus Police Department partnered with Georgia State Patrol for a crime suppression operation. The three day period spanning from January 28th through the 30th ended with nearly 60 arrests, more than 100 criminal charges, more than 600 traffic citations issued, and nearly 100 grams of illegal drugs seized. We'll break down more details on that operation that involved more than 40 officers from the local and state level. And out of the nearly 500 cases, how one turned violent. That's tonight on News 3 Night Watch. A former Columbus court employee accused of stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars in public funds could soon be pleading guilty. Willie Dems was indicted in federal court back in August. Our News 3's Chuck Williams joins us now with the latest developments. Chuck. Blake, there's a hearing scheduled in U.S. District Court tomorrow morning in front of federal judge Clay Land. Recent court documents indicate that Willie Dems may be ready to make a deal. Willie Demps was chief deputy clerk of the Muskogee County Superior and State Courts for almost three decades 
before he abruptly retired. Demps and seven alleged co-conspirators were accused of stealing nearly a half million dollars in court funds over 10 months in 2019. Six co-defendants have pleaded guilty in what authorities say was a check cashing scheme out of clerk accounts. An FBI agent told the court the amount could have been in the millions going back to 2010. According to a January 13th motion, an assistant U.S. attorney told the court a possible deal was in the works. Quote, the United States and defendant Willie Demps are negotiating a plea deal in this case. The parties anticipate that defendant Demps will plead guilty to a superseding information, which includes a charge of tax evasion. Amelia G. Helmick, Assistant U.S. Attorney. Dimp's attorney Charles, Car- Charles Cox out of Macon tells News 3 he will not have comment prior to Tuesday morning's hearing. The U.S. Attorney's Office does not comment on pending cases. Blake, back to you. All right, thanks to Chuck. Following that story the entire way through, new, really big new details tonight. Curtis Porch, Doreen Porch, Terry McBride, LaMarcus Palmer, George Cook, and Samuel Cole have admitted to their roles in the conspiracy. Only Dimps and his mother-in-law, Rosalie Bassey, have not entered guilty pleas. Also in Columbus, two men have been arrested on multiple charges of sexual exploitation of children. According to the GBI, 38-year-old Adam Page and 42-year-old Jeffrey Garman were arrested on January 25th after separate investigations. The arrest of the men came after search warrants were executed at two homes connected to the men in the Columbus area. Both Page and Garman have been charged with four counts of sexual exploitation of children. Both men have been booked into the Muskogee County Jail. And as we head into the break, I want to say thank you again for trusting WRBL News 3. Coming up, we'll take you across the river into East Alabama, where we're following a number of developing court cases right there in Lee County. We'll be right back. News 3 is on your side with Teresa Whitaker, Phil Scoggins, Chief Meteorologist Bob Jeswald, and Sports with Rex Castillo.
on your side. You're watching WRBL News 3 Evening Edition. Well, tonight we're following a number of developing court cases for you this evening across the river in Lee County. However, a defense attorney for suspected killer Grady Wilkes says they will probably need more time to prepare. Now, several Auburn police officers and Beekner's Motorcycle Club were inside the courtroom Monday to show support to Beekner's family during this status hearing. Now, this trial could take at least two weeks and a larger jury pool expected to be brought in for jury selection. Wilkes is being held without bond. He also faces three counts of attempted murder when investigators say he fired upon several officers back in May of 2019 as they responded to a domestic disturbance call from the mother of Wilkes's child at a mobile home park off of Wire Road. Well, the man accused of kidnapping and killing an Auburn University graduate student back in 2006 is slated to go to trial March 28th. Daryl Ennis is charged with the capital with the alleged capital murder of 24 year old Lori Ann Selinski. A tentative trial date was set for 2020, but the COVID-19 pandemic has of course slowed down that process. Ennis was arrested in 2018 after a cold case unit worked on the case and a grand jury returned indictments on capital murder for murder during a kidnapping and murder during a burglary. Now, as far as we know, a body has not been recovered. However, investigators are not commenting on any evidence before trial. Investigators have said Ennis was friends with Selinski and was a person of interest early on in this case. A Montgomery man pleads guilty to drinking and driving in a deadly crash that killed a 57 year old Auburn University library employee. Back in June of 2019, Auburn investigators say that George Shearer III was 28 years old and intoxicated when he hit and killed Joe Cleary while Cleary was riding a motorcycle along Wire Road. Investigators say Shearer left the scene of the crash. Now, Shearer was facing a murder charge but pled guilty to manslaughter and driving under the influence. Shearer was sentenced to 15 years on that manslaughter charge and one year for the DUI. Prosecutors informed the court that Cleary's family supported the plea agreement. They are filing a wrongful death suit. And you're watching News 3 Evening Edition. Much more news straight ahead. But first, here's a look at what you can expect tonight on News Nation. Tonight on Banfield. New meaning to going postal. Why a mail carrier is a new hero in New Hampshire. Plus, your worst flight mare, an ocean of luggage, a sea of despair. What caused all of these jet blues? And how many Americans actually get away with murder? That's tonight on Banfield on News Nation. And you can watch News Nation in prime time each night starting at 8 Eastern. Take a look at your screen to find News Nation on your television provider. We'll take a quick break and we'll see you in three minutes. Hurt by a big truck. 1-800-CALL-KEN. One call, that's all.